Hello and welcome to another specimen series and what a treat this one is. Myself and Chris made the long journey from Norfolk all the way to Hampshire yesterday afternoon and then we got up early this morning and here we are at the River Test. And what we're fishing for this time is hopefully catching some nice grayling. Come. It's the first grayling of the year. Well, anyone who's fished for grayling will know that you normally end up doing a bit of juggling with grayling, so I'm going to tease this tiny little size 18 hook out. And uh, how beautiful is that? That's comfortably over a pound. That one probably a pound and a quarter, getting on for a pound and a half. So. On and off, I suppose I've been coming here for over 20 years each winter. It's a real treat, like I mentioned. I love coming to these chalk streams. There's loads of great swims to explore throughout the day. Talking of which, there's one above me, which is normally quite kind. So I'm quite keen to get up there and see what else we can catch. feeling there might be one or two grayling in this spot. It's a nice deep run on my inside bank and only a little fella, but it's a grayling, that's what matters. Just tease that tiny little hook out. And they are, aren't they beautiful? They're I might stand corrected, but I'm pretty sure the ones with the smaller dorsal fins are the female grayling. And they are <laughs> incredibly lively, but what beautiful little fish they are. Well, when it comes to the hardware side for the grayling fishing, if I could give you one tip, it would be to use a longer float rod. I've got a 14 foot Drennan Vertex here and that extra length definitely makes it a lot easier to control the float, mend the line and just keep in contact the whole time. And attached to the rod I've got one of the Advanta RVS centre pins. It's an incredibly smooth running centre pin and I must admit it's an absolute joy to use. There's a certain point in the swim where I normally get my bites. When you keep feeding maggots you will find that you get a almost like a hit zone. The line on the centre pin, I've got a four pound line on here, and then I've come down to my hook link, which I believe is about three pound for a size 18 hook. I like to fish quite neat and tidy and fine for the grail, and the, the water's so incredibly clear, it definitely helps to keep your presentation super neat. And my shot and pattern, if I just reel it in, I'll quickly show you. I've got a, I think the float's rated at 2.8 grams, and I've got a two and a half gram Olivet as my bulk weight. And that's, it's got the hook link attached to it. I put a tiny little micro swivel beneath the Olivet. And what that does, it makes a really easy point for you to put your hook link onto. You can just loop to loop it onto the swivel. And that swivel as well, when you're reeling the, the rig back in, it prevents the maggots from twisting up the hook link. And then I have a couple of, I think I've got some number eight dropper shot, just to keep the hook link down there nice and neat and tidy. It's probably another tip I'd give you is to fish. You're better off fishing a slightly heavier float than one that's too light. You want to keep your bait down near the bottom where the grayling are. 
and another point I can hold the float back with the rod and inch it through nice and slowly without the bait wafting through the water and I can just see just connected with that bite and I can actually see the brown trout chasing around out there so unfortunately it's not a grayling but it's still all good fun. Been on that one last cast in this swim for the last few fish and although this is quite a nice grayling I'm I've got a carrier stream behind me I think I'll get this fella in and I think I'm gonna have a move and try the carrier stream for a little while here we go <laughs> it's a lively little one this one come on fella lovely like I say we'll get this one unhooked and I'm gonna move to the next spot I think the hook's popped out in the net by the looks of it, which is handy. And I've had several fish around that size in this swim, and although they're great sport, me being me, I want to try and get a bigger one. So I'm going to get on the move, and as I just mentioned, I'm going to jump on the carry stream and see if there's any bigger grayling in there. Whenever I come to the river here at Timsbury, I can't resist dropping in on this carrier stream. It was, this is in fact the very first swim that I caught a grayling from probably about 20 years ago when I came the first time. And I don't want to jinx it, but the stream's normally quite friendly. If you, if you haven't done a lot of trotting, it's a good place to practice. Being a lot narrower than the main river, it's a lot easier to control the float. But the flow's really hammering through here. But I still fancy my chances. I know spoke to another gentleman up the river who's already fished this this morning he, he told me he lost quite a nice grayling but that doesn't put me off I think he's been rested and I quite fancy this first trot through as a bite let's just hope the trout aren't quite so persistent just holding it back on the crease of the main flow I just pulled out of the first fish let's pop it there again put it on the crease hold it back instantly what have we got Whatever it is, it's a tiny little trout, this one. I think I can just guide him through the weed. It must be a trout angler's dream here on the river. There's so many of them. I think even I could catch a trout on a fly here. Let's try putting it a little bit further down the river. Might have to go a bit further down to get out of this real fast water. That might be a little bit too fast for the grayling. Trout don't seem to mind where they sit. Oh, that looks like the spot to me. I thought I'd missed it, but I haven't. I've connected. What have we got? As a betting man, I'd say it's another trout. I hope it's not, but... What is it? Yeah, it's a... Let me just net this one. Another brown trout. Come on, fella. Another brown trout, not the intended species. That's a bite all the same, and hopefully on the next trot through, we can catch ourselves a grayling. Two little brown trout the first couple of trots, but the third trot through and we've got a grayling. He's 
Not massive, but he's not a tiny one. There we are. What a lovely looking fish that is, blimey. Oh, that's not too shabby. Well, I generally get a smaller stamp of fish on the carry. Pretty much the hooks come out in the net, which is probably handy. But he's not tiny. He's incredibly lively, but how can you not enjoy trotting for those? Cracking grail in that one. Well, I've had a brilliant 20 minute spell in this little weir pool on the carrier stream and the average size of the grayling has surprised me if I'm honest. Previous years I've caught quite a few small fish in here but these ones aren't too bad at all and I say these ones because I've got two that have been resting in the net for a couple of minutes. It's really important to make sure they've got all their strength back before you release them back in the river but I can see these two are rarer to go and I expect they'll play up on camera because grayling generally do. But here we go. I think this is the slightly smaller of the two. I've had half a dozen grayling in here about this size. And we'll get that one slipped back. And I think this one's a smidgen bigger. And like I say, he's fairly lively. He's more than ready to go back now. But that's been a brilliant bit of sport. Off he goes. But I think I'm just about ready for some lunch. And as much as I'd like to carry on trotting in this little carrier stream, I think the main river's calling me. There's loads of great swims that I haven't fished yet. So I think a quick sandwich and then back to the main river. better for a sandwich and recharge my enthusiasm. I've got my coat on now, it's getting a bit cooler. It's later in the afternoon, I've probably got about an hour of light left. And I must say, these swims in front of the lodge here look absolutely spot on. So fingers crossed I'm right. I'm gonna crack on, like I say, about 45 minutes an hour, and let's see what the last couple of swims bring. Thing when I drop into a new swim I, I never bother to bring a plummet when I'm trotting on the river. The, the way to do it is to have a trot through the swim, you can sort of guess the depth and if you're not just tripping the bottom just keep going deeper and deeper with the float and then when I just start catching the bottom and it's pulling the float under I'll shallow it up a little bit. So it'll take me two or three runs through the swim until I find out how deep it is and I, I always want the bait so it's almost just bouncing on the bottom. And I haven't had any indication on the float there, so I think the next trot I can make it a little bit deeper. Well, I thought I'd have to put a bit more depth on, but first trot through and I'm into something that's far too heavy. If it is a grayling, it's a huge grayling, but my money's on another big brown trout. Um, I can't really tell. I think I kid myself into thinking they're enormous grayling, but I'm pretty sure it is a trout. Might be the first rainbow trout of the day. Certainly not a grayling. Still going to put it a little bit deeper for the next run through. Them trout look as if they come up in the water, they hit the maggots on the top sometimes. in by a, literally a slither. It's quite lucky that stayed on. Well, I'm actually quite impressed with that. He's a bit of an old character. This is a, my first rainbow trout of the day and he's got a peck fin missing. Like something's had a nibble on his tail, but that put up one hell of a fight on the trot again. That was my first trot through in the new swim. So hopefully there are some grayling out there, but I'm secretly quite pleased to catch this one. I'm 
pretty sure this is going to be another trout. This lovely looking glide on the inside bank has been full of trout, unfortunately. I've had, I've had a bite just about every trot through, but they have all been trout. It's probably going to have to be my last fish of the day because we're fast losing the light. But we're out again tomorrow and we're on a different river tomorrow. We're on the River Itchin. So hopefully we can get into some more grayling. I'll get this trout in and I think that'll be time to get on the road, have a bite to eat, ready for a fresh start in the morning. After a very successful day on the river test, the following morning saw us head over to the nearby River Itchin, and it was the perfect morning for grayland fishing. There'd been a sharp frost overnight and the wind had dropped considerably. The problem I was facing was every single swim on the fishery looked really inviting. So I couldn't resist, as soon as I'd got out of the van, the very first swim I walked up to, which was a nice big sweep and bend, I had to fish it and it certainly didn't disappoint. One or two trots through the swim just to get the depth set right and pretty much my third trot through the swim and I was into my first and hopefully not my last grayling of the day. Good morning and welcome to a frosty river itch in this morning and how about that for the first grayling of the day. A little bit bigger still that one, probably one of the biggest ones of the trip so far and hopefully the itching will bring us a few more nice fish like this. Took me a couple of trots through the swim to get the depth right but as soon as I was just bouncing above the bottom this is what came along. So whilst this one's still really lively I'm going to slip it back and see what else we can catch. through this glide here but there's a few fish here almost looks like the float's going too quick but I've had two trots and I've had two grayling so I'll have a few more trots through here a bit smaller these ones I think I will still scoop it up in the net if this is a trout or a grayling. I hope it's a grayling because it feels a little bit heavier than the, the other fish I've had in this swim. Hopefully we'll find out in a minute. It's so difficult on these tiny little hooks in this fast flow. You have to, you have to take your time. And Do you know what? I think it is a grayling by the looks of it. Come on, mate. This water gets faster and faster under my feet, but... Fish seem to like it. Let's find a net. A 
And they put those fins up in this fast flow and even when they're fairly average, they get the rod right bent through. Come on, mate. This is the hairy bit. Not particularly graceful, but just keeping his head out in that flow. <laughs> so, so close. Yay. Well, I thought it was going to... It seemed a bit of a trout fest in this shallow, fast swim, but I persevered. I'm quite good at one more cast. Anyone will know that. Try and tease that microscopic little size 18 out. Oh, how about that? That was a lovely grayling. Well, what started off as a brown trout has turned into a rather nice grayling. I'm mega pleased with that. But I think I've pretty much exhausted this swim now. It took a little while to get this bite. So I'm going to get on the move because there's so many great swims to explore as yet. And we've got all day to wander up and down. So when I get to the next spot, I'm going to talk through what I look for when I'm trotting for grayling in regards to the swim. So we're going to get on the move and find a nice grayling-y looking swim and I'll talk you through how I fish them. Well, I just slipped that nice grayling back further upstream. I've come down to the next set of double bends. It was quite shallow and fast above these bends but this just screams fish to me. And what I look for is the, is the obvious thing, it is a much deeper bend as it come through here. And if you look, you've got a lot of fast water on the outside of the bend with the slack on the inside. And what I'm gonna try and do is trot my float along this crease where the fast water meets the slack water. So I'm gonna start trickling a bit of bait in. It's gonna take me a couple of casts to get the depth set, but hopefully we'll find some fish. Right, I'm now going to put my first trot through the swim and I have no idea how deep it is. I can see it's quite a bit deeper than further up river. So I've kind of guesstimated the depth and we'll run it through this first time. And now what I'm looking for is if that float keeps snagging the bottom and going under, then I'm too deep. So I need to shallow it up a little bit. If this snow goes through the swim without any sign of indication whatsoever, I can probably add a bit more depth. So that's now gone right through that crease that looks like that should be the spot for a bite without so much as a dither. So I'm going to have it in straight away and I'm going to make it a little bit deeper. It's a case of just keep adjusting the depth a little bit at a time to the point if it just starts touching the bottom and pulling the float under then I can just shallow it up a little bit. I've just put about another foot on there now. Let's see how it goes through this time. Perfect the way that's just going just off the edge of that fast flow. Seems pretty deep. I still haven't touched the bottom of the hook bait. Little indication then whether that's a, a fish or the bottom, I'm not sure. It just touch it obviously shallows up as it goes around the bend. So I'm gonna put a little bit more depth on still. Yeah, I've got a little bit of weed on the hook, but the bit that I think the fish are going to be in is the centre of the bend here in the deep water. So hopefully this isn't going to be far off the bottom now. I'll just put it into the fast flow. The float will, the float generally will find the crease if you just hold the rod out. It'll settle where it needs to. And probably one of the most important things is little and often keep feeding maggots and I'm feeding them well above me. He's trotting around there lovely now. Might take you 20 minutes to get your first bite. You've got to keep feeding the swim and building the swim up. But I can't imagine there's not any fish in this, this lovely swim. There was a guy fishing it when we first got here this morning, but hopefully he's left me a few fish. Well, I'm going to give this probably 10, 15 minutes of keep trickling the maggots in, see if we can get a bite. If nothing happens, I'll just keep moving along the river and trying all the different nice looking spots. I think that just touched the bottom there. Let's run it through again. 
a pinch of maggots, little and often your maggots, probably 10 or 15 maggots every trot. Well, that's definitely not the intended species, but it goes to prove once you get a bit of bait going through the swim and find the right depth, you start getting bites. Get the foliage on the landing net handle. Well, I'm no expert on the, the matter. I don't do a huge amount of game fishing, but I'm pretty sure that is a sea trout. Some of the people watching this video would probably know far better than me, so. Feel free to drop in the comments whether you think that's a brown trout or a sea trout, but it's looking very much like a sea trout to me. I think what you have to remember, this is predominantly a game fishery here at the Lower Itchin Fishery, Then they open up in the winter for us coarse anglers, so you are going to catch all sorts of trout whilst you're trying to catch the grayling, but it's certainly good fun. I'll get this fella slipped back, I think he's just about ready to go. I'm going to have a few more trots through this swim because hopefully we can catch one or two grayling here. Off he goes, and let's crack on. Well, that little grayling has been the only grayling I've had out of this swim. There's been more big sea trout than grayling, so I'm going to keep on the move. There's some more nice swims down there, so I'm going to see if I can find some more of those nice big grayling. had a bite almost instantly first trot through this swim and I can see it's quite a nice grayling. And one thing I do do when I'm trotting is I scale everything down nice and neat. I'm only fishing single maggot on a size 18. A lot of people probably don't give grayling the credit that they deserve. A, a single maggot will definitely get you more bites than a big bunch of maggots on a big hook. That's an absolute beauty. Let's, fingers crossed I can keep it on. That is the only downside of fishing these tiny little hooks. You have to be a bit careful when you're playing the fish. But on a nice soft float rod, and if you take your time, you're normally all right. All right let's see if we can get this, because this is a cracker, this one. My theory with the single maggot fishing is when you're feeding maggots in the river, the fish aren't eating them in bunches of twos, they're eating them one at a time as they flow down the river. Let me just concentrate for the last few seconds and scoop that one up. So I don't think putting a single maggot on is going to catch you smaller fish. If anything, it'll get you more bites and hopefully bump into two, one or two bigger fish like this one. I'm pretty sure that's the biggest one I've had on this trip so far, aren't I? I haven't weighed any of them yet and I'm not particularly good at guessing weights of grayling so I'm going to unhook this fella and I am just going to pop this one on the scales so we can get an idea how big it is. And there we go, that's hovering around about £1.10, £1.11, that's a cracking grayling that is. They, they always look much bigger than they actually are, I think it's those huge fins they've got but really pleased with that and let's have a proper look at it. How about that for a cracking grayling? That's exactly why we travel down to Hampshire, to catch beautiful fish like that. I'm really pleased with that. We're gonna slip this one back because that was my first trot in this swim. So there might be one or two others like that down here. So a mega fish. 
I can't wait to try and catch some more. Well, the bite started to dry up in that last swim, so I've had one more move. I think this will be the last move of the day because we've got a long drive home this afternoon. So whilst I'm fishing this swim, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the float that I use and how I control it through the swim. So the first point I wanna mention is to use a float that's big enough that you can control it. If you use a tiny little stick float, you're not gonna be able to guide it through the swim exactly how you want to. It'll be washed all over in the flow and your hook bait is gonna keep lifting up off the bottom. I believe this float is just under three grams and I've got pretty much all my bulk shot in the form of an Olivet down the bottom of the rig. I wouldn't go any lighter than this float. This is probably the lightest float that I can get away with on these chalk streams. And if anything, maybe a three and a half or a four gram would make life easier. The other reason I use a big float is you need to be able to mend the line. And by that, I mean if the line kites behind the float, you can lift the line up with the rod I've just gone to mend the line and I've got a fish hanging on the end but if the line drifts behind the float using the rod you pick the line up off the river and straighten it and then you can carry on trotting so it's so important that you keep in contact with the float keep it trotting nice and straight and that way you can guide it along the crease or whatever feature you're fishing in the swim and hopefully once you master that you'll be hooking into a few fish like this so I'm going to carry on fishing this swim probably for the last half an hour 40 minutes by the looks of it, there's a bit of sport to be had. This looks like one last good grayling. I've just got to try and guide it in the net. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking these last minutes on these tiny hooks. Come on. Here it comes. Yeah, that is a lovely fish. Come on. And that's another nice grayling. And that might have to be the last one on the trip because we've got a long drive home, but what a cracking fish to end on. Well, how about that for a grayling to end on? I've had a brilliant trip here. Yesterday we fished the River Test at Timsbury and today we're on the Lower Itchen Fishery. Both those stretches can be fished on a day ticket, although the tickets have to be booked in advance. You can't just turn up and fish. I hope this video has inspired a few of you to do some grayling fishing this winter because no matter how cold it gets, these are always very obliging. I look forward to seeing you on the next specimen series. If there's any suggestions what you want to see me fish for, drop it in the comments below. And until then, tight lines and good luck.